And so the first step is to make sure that everything is as factored down as it can be. So we can factor this one down to x times x minus 1. And so we have that. And our next step is to multiply by the least common denominator. And so we multiply both sides by x times x to the subtract 1. So And so then after we multiply that through, we will, we will have x minus 1 times x plus 2 subtract 4x equals negative 2. So then our next step is to use the FOIL method with these two. And so you have x squared plus 2x minus 1x minus 2. Then you, then you put on the Next, subtract 4x equals negative 2. So then the next step is to add the like terms of 2x, 1, negative 1x, and negative 4x. So you end with negative 3x. Mm. And so then because this is a quadratic of formula, you have to have all of them on the same side. So you add these terms, you add the 2. So then you have x squared subtract 3x equals 0. So then we're able to factor out one of the x's, and so it would be x 2 times x subtract 3 equals 0. So that would make our x's equal x equals 0 and positive 3. But we can't actually... But zero doesn't work because if you were to plug it back into the equation, you can't divide by zero because that's out of our domain. So we know that x equals three. All right, so for my second equation, I will be completing the square of this quadratic equation. And so the first step is to make sure that this a value has a coefficient of one. And so you have to divide it by six. So then you have x squared subtract 11 6x subtract 35 6 equals 0. And so then our next step is to take this b value and bring it over here and you multiply it by 1 half. So you have negative 11 6 times 1 half equals negative 11 twelfths. We're just going to leave this here for a second and go back to the equation. So now, negative 35, 6 does not factor very easily. And so we are just going to take it and we are going to add it to both sides and we are going to put it on the other side and just not deal with it right now. So now we have x squared subtract 11, 6, x equals 35, 6. And so, now we need a new c value, and to get a c value that is also factorable, we're going to take this and we are going to square it. So we have it in our box and we're gonna take it and square it. So we will have 121 over 144. And so to add it back in this side of the equation, we also have to add it to this side. So we're going to add 121 over 144. So our next step is to factor it. And so this side is actually very easy, easy to factor because this side will always be the b value times 1 half or whatever is in our box before we squared it. So it's x minus 11 twelfths squared. And so this side is a little trickier. We have to find a common denominator and so to get to 144 from 6, we have to multiply the top and the bottom by 24. So we get equals 840 over 144 plus 121 over 144. And so then to add these, it will equal, oops, getting rid of that, it will equal 961 over 144. So our new equation is x subtract 11 twelfths 
squared equals 961 over 144. So then we're trying to get x by itself, and so we square it. And so we square it to get rid of it. We have to square both sides. So x subtract 11 twelfths equals 31 twelfths. And then you have to add plus or minus it. So then we're still trying to get x by itself, so you add 11 twelfths to both sides. And I like to... I like to rearrange it so it is x equals 11 twelfths plus or minus 31 twelfths. And so 11 plus 31 is 42, so it's x equals 42 twelfths or 6, no, 7 halves. And so that's one, and then 11 subtract 31 equals negative 20 twelfths or negative 5 thirds. So in the end we have x equals 7 halves and negative 5 